1988, a man by the name of Delon Vreend, who I'll be referring to from now on as V, was hired in a college in Edmonton, Alberta, as a laboratory coordinator. For two years, he performed excellently as job, receiving both positive evaluations and earning both promotions and raises. Then in 1990, when questioned, V told the college president that he was a homosexual. Following this, in early 1991, the college's board of directors decided they did not wish to employ homosexuals at their college, and shortly afterwards, the college requested V's resignation. However, V declined to resign, and so his employment from the college was terminated. The only reason given for his first termination was his sexual orientation. Following his termination, V decided to file a complaint to the Alberta Human Rights Commission on the grounds that his employer had discriminated against him by firing him due to his sexual orientation. However, V was told he could not make a complaint since sexual orientation was not protected under the Alberta's Individual Rights Protection Act. V then began a legal proceeding arguing that the act violated Section 15 of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms by the omission of sexual orientation as a protected right. The trial judge declared that the act violated Section 15 of the Charter and that sexual orientation should be read into the law. However, shortly thereafter, the decision was overturned by the Alberta Court of Appeals. This was a series of events that led this case to be brought to the Supreme Court of Canada and would now be known as Vreend v. Alberta. In this case, the law in question, or the issue, was whether or not Alberta's admission of sexual orientation in their law was a violation of Section 15 of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, and, if this was a violation, was it justified under Section 1 of the Charter? These two sections of the Charter, and how they apply to the Individual Rights Protection Act, are the laws in question for this specific case. In this case, the Court determined three things. First, is that the law in question did in fact violate Section 15 of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. The second being that this violation was not protected by Section 1 of the Charter. And then finally, the best way to resolve this issue of, would be to read sexual orientation into a law, and this would be the best way to uh, fix a charter violation that had occurred. The court decided that to determine if the law violated Section 15 of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, that two requirements must be met. First, there must be a distinction which results in a lack of equality before the law, or lack of equal protection under the law. In addition, the discrimination must be done on the basis of enumerated or analogous ground. This is proven first by the court determining that the omission of sexual orientation creates a distinction between homosexuals and other disadvantaged groups that are explicitly protected under the law. Second, being that the distinction between homosexuals and heterosexuals, as the omission will disproportionately affect those who are gay or lesbian. These distinctions will result in a lack of equality and protection under the law. This distinction also has the effect of placing disadvantaged groups among those who are not better affected. The first being that those who are discriminated against have no recourse under the law due to Alberta law omitting the coverage of protection against discrimination. This omission also sends a message to everyone in Alberta that it is not just possible, but perfectly fine, to discriminate against someone based on their sexual preferences. Thus, the government in Alberta has in effect stated that all people are equal under the law, except for the, those who are either gay or lesbian. Due to the reasons listed above, the court has concluded that the Alberta law must violate Section 15 of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Regarding the issue of protection of Section 1 of the Charter, the court determined that the admission did not meet the requirements and thus could not be carried under Section 1 of the Charter, as there was no submission of government objective of being under inclusion and accepting of discriminated admission. But the court also stated that if the act of submission is ignored, the result would still be the same, as the admission presence in the law was an indicative of good sexual preference and the discrimination as a whole. That being, to protect people from discrimination, such an act cannot indicate any reason for protecting or discrouting them to justify overriding the rights given by the Charter. Regarding the minimal impairment, the Alberta government failed to justify its basis for excluding sexual orientation from the Individual Rights Protection Act, as this exclusion results in the total impairment of the rights protected by the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. The Alberta government also failed to display any way 
and this is what the nature of the text human knows through the exclusion of sexual orientation in the law. The court determined that reading sexual orientation into the law that would be the best remedy as doing so would minimize interference with the adult's legitimate legislative purpose of the protection of inalienable rights for the only offense of human right trafficking, which the individual rights protection act could do for groups other than homosexuals. Thus, this pleading in its preferable discretion granted law, which would instead of helping anyone, would ensure that all people in Alberta would lose protection of their rights because of human interference with the legislature. The court also assumed that reading into the law was thus preferable to having no human rights for people born in the province. As for the court's opinion on its decision, most of them agreed, however, there was one dissenting opinion. The only dissenting judge was uh, John Major. He dissented uh, on the remedy, uh, saying that instead of reading into the law, it would have been better to just strike down the section itself. The reason why this wasn't done is, uh, kind of discussed before, uh, doing so would do two things. One, as I said, it would deny Albertans their rights. In addition to that, have an unreasonable impact on the Albertan legislature, where despite these issues, um, John Major decided this was still the best course of action, as he believes that the, um, the omission of this uh, law was considerably discriminatory and there was uh, no form of any decent reason for it. And he believes that if it just read into law, that the Albertan government would attempt to do a repeal it under Section 33 of the Notwithstanding Clause, which some of the members of government did attempt to do, actually, although the Albertan Premier at the time said against this. And it's also interesting to note that in the Sovereignty Assembly, he pleaded for the Women's Protest Against This History Study, which did actually end up failing all the uh, Albertan politicians at the time. Now, from looking at the law overall, the immediate importance of its decision is clearly the fact that omissions in legislation can create a flow of violence as part of religious freedoms. And it's also very important to note that the bill went to pass with pretty significant importance in terms of uh, the LGBTQ rights and uh, in the overall context of Canada itself. And this is very clearly represented in his initial termination because Ellen's employer fired him because he was gay and for no other reason and they made no attempt to hide the fact that that's the only reason why they fired him. This also brings to mind the quote about in the uh, Supreme Court doctrine of estoppel is that the omission of sexual orientation in the initial law itself, which was the Freedom of Discrimination Practices, effectively is the government saying that Brent Tennis is a child if, uh, for discrimination if the person is gay. And that was very clearly represented here. As a result, this decision is very important. It will by no means just solve everything because while this decision did ensure that people who are homosexual shouldn't simply be fired for their sexual preferences, it also meant to kill the issue for an Alberta. A pretty big example from this um, from the same province in Alberta where in 2005, the Alberta government passed a law stating that marriage was between only a man and a woman. And they even used Section 33 of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms to ensure that this bill would pass, even though it did explicitly violate the charter. And so the court said, well, then, we won't use this for marriage between same sex attraction. But it's also worth keeping in mind that this issue has also had a uh, lesson to follow. Because up until this point, many people who went to the courts in terms of gay rights issues had not been shown to have not been given much government success at all, specifically in regards to sex and uh, marital status. And that is my summary on this case. I hope you um, maybe not found it enjoyable, but hopefully bearable. And have a good day.